Hi. How are you? Hi. Janixa oh. Bravo here. Brett Gelman here. Adam Shartoff here. Okay, then. That was... Okay. <laughs> Nice to meet you guys. I'm sorry the we had a little bit of a uh, technical issue there, but I'm grateful that we were able to talk. It happens to the best of us. Yes. Okay, so let's just get right to it. I saw Lemon at Maryland, actually, of all places. Oh, oh. So we were at one of the screenings, maybe. I was there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was at your screening. You were both there. And afterward, I was going to just say hello and introduce myself, but you were, you know, of course, surrounded by... All the adoring uh, fans and whatnot. So. Oh my gosh, there was so much adoration. Yeah. Right <laughs> to not say hello. All of that Baltimore paparazzi. It's, oh my god. <laughs> well, well, it was certainly first of all the film that was all a buzz. It was it was the film that people were talking about. So I I'm glad I went. I'm glad I got an opportunity to see it. And then then it turned out to deliver. So that was good. Well done. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Always good to hear that there was a buzz about it. There were no, there really was, but you, you know. Oh, cool! You must have heard about that. I mean, you kind of you get a, you, you start picking up on that type of thing, don't you? I mean, all kidding aside. I don't really notice that kind of thing, to be honest. I think I'm, I'm panicking. Yeah. So much, and I'm spiraling, and mm. and I'm building my own narratives that are generally uh, incredibly negative. Sounds fun. So, I just assume that no one cares. Yeah, my my, <laughs> my ears, my ears like, and eyes like to close to anything positive. They only notice uh, they only notice damning criticism and, and uh, dismissive uh, dismissiveness. So uh, I get yeah. it. I get it. Uh, let, let me ask you this question. This is your first feature together, so as a collaboration. Uh, yes, it is my it's my first feature at all, and yeah. my first with Brett. Yeah, and it's my first feature being the lead of a film. Right, and it's because you made a short called Eat. Uh, maybe I missed some other stuff, but... No, no, no. Yeah, I, I made eight short films. Right. Eat was the first. It starred Brett and Catherine Waterston. So what? that was our first time working together about six years ago. Oh, very good. Okay. Oh, wow. So you've really been prolific. Yeah, I've been um, I've been uh, jumping at at all, at all the chances that have been presented to me. I I wrote a lot of short films. I wrote all of well of the eight seven of them. I wrote myself. One was a documentary, and um, I you know I didn't go to film school. And in wanting to do this kind of uh, lateral move from theater directing to film directing. I wanted to get as much practice as I could beyond watching, but also like being in the field, so to speak. Mm. Do you feel there was? It was a, I guess, a natural transition to make a feature after doing all those shorts. I mean, there is something about Lemon, though it's cohesive as a feature. God forbid I sound, say anything that sounds critical. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but oh, no. <laughs> but oh, no. because there's vignettes. There's vignettes right throughout. It feels like, or some just call it scenes. I mean, you know, I could see that you mastered making a short in this film. I don't know. Totally. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think I, I had read or someone had said that it felt uh, perhaps like three short films, um, and that was on purpose. The the first act of the movie focuses on career, right. with a little bit of love, okay. and the second act of the film is all family. Family. And then the third act of the film is love revisited as sort of a completion of the first. And um, and it was done that way because we were kind of playing with this genre of comedy that is about this late 30s, early 40s, like white guy who is floundering, who has a great partner who lives in a nice house, who has a solid group of friends, who has a great family, and he's just kind of like puttering and failing at life, but everything seems to kind of work out for. And in those films, we navigate family, love, and career, and they're like woven together a little more seamlessly, but I kind of wanted to isolate, look at, at each of those pieces and kind of focus on them as a little bit of islands and do beginning, middle, and ends for each of those. Um, and, and yeah, and I think my background in theater feels sort of very loud throughout the piece because it's also shot a lot, uh, I would say a good percentage of it is shot in proscenium. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it also it has a it has a psychological story in that the first act is you're seeing very much the the present situation that he's in, and then in the second act you're seeing almost his origin and the reason why he is the way he is, and then in the third act you see the potential for a different future. Um, and which is ultimately not fully realized, not to ruin anything, but uh, but the through line through all of that is who this person is and sort of uh, the arc he goes through in experiencing all those different states of time in his in his life. Mm-hmm. Well, I got you talking, Brett. Was it? I don't know. Was it a ch- challenging to play someone who's kind of a- opaque? I mean, he's very deadpan, yes. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he, it's hard to read what's going on in his mind. You know, uh, I have to interrupt myself by just telling everybody this is a, a comedy, but, you know, you're going through uh, torture, you know, most of the time. Uh, you're opaque in that way, yeah, Buster, well, uh, those silent those silent actors like Buster Keaton was opaque, you know what I mean? It's a really, it's like almost like that kind of silent movie approach. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's totally true. I, I There is something very... Uh, you know the, the silent movie about you know something very vaudevillian about him. He wears a uniform throughout right. the movie in the way Eaton and Chaplin and Harold Lloyd did. Uh, he and 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 my, especially like Keaton, there is this really stark stone face kind of this yeah. stark yeah this very stoic stark physicality to him that a lot of intensity is being filtered through. And uh, and so, and that is very much in my personal influences as a performer. I mean, those right. were the first actors that I loved. You know, not only them, but people like the Marx Brothers. So oh, I'm not familiar with them. Uh, were they funny? <laughs> <laughs> They're like these three, like uh, modern day brothers. Okay. That, modern day, whatever. Yeah, I forget. Uh, I think they were. I think they were the original Ghostbusters. Mm. Yeah, but they got recast. Well, there were f- actually there were five of them, but I guess you know there were. I mean, yeah. Gumbo was my favorite. One. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, You're... My big, he's my biggest comedic influence. <laughs> <laughs> Gumbo, uh, Gumbo no, Marx. Uh, yeah, um, I want to. No, um, Go ahead. I'm sorry, I keep w- interrupting. But the way in which we both approached this was that even though we knew that it would be inherently funny at times, we sort of just let the way in which we wrote it and the way in which we we executed it was we just let the moment be the moment. And that's mm. the way Janixa approached it with all the actors. It was like, if it's funny, great. If it's not, that's great too, as long as it's truthful and intense. I mean, truth be told, when it went to Sundance, we were like, should we have said that this was a drama? Would it have done even better, you know, and, and people just be pleasantly surprised when they laugh? Oh, so you, um, yeah. Are you saying, before, where did it, wait, did it premiere at Sundance or you saying, was it Sundance? Yeah, it did. It oh, I'm sorry. Sundance, Some reason so, I thought it was South um, by Southwest. I apologize. Go ahead. Well, oh no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, South by, it was at South by two and South by was really great for the film as well. Sure. So, uh, yeah, we just, it's sort of, you know, we don't, we prefer not to totally think of it as a comedy or drama. We just call it a comedy because, you know, we have to pick one for other people. Right. But, you know, to us, and and we're also, in the way that we also approach doing it, we're also really open to how an audience experiences it. And that's also been very singular Um just even from moment to moment throughout the film. I mean, some some moments get laughs, and then the same moment, the next time we watch it, will we'll, you know not get laughs at all. We'll get gas. So hmm. it's uh, it's 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 pretty open ended to us, and we you know that's that's a way in we in which we like to work. We like to respect an audience's experience with it. Well, having been in an interracial marriage i only bring this up because it's rare where you see this combination of jewish and i'm gonna say from from my perspective african-american i know i know janice you are 
your family's from Panama? Yes, exactly. Okay. Anyway, the point being, though, his love interest. See, this is tricky. I'm, I'm explaining it really badly. There's actually, Isaac has actually the relationship he's been involved with, which is, and I don't know how much is I'm giving away, but uh, which is sort of falling apart, and then he has a, a new potential relationship, correct? With, with, correct. With an African-American character. So, so I don't mean to draw too close a parallel, but I, I want to bring this back to your relationship and how maybe that influenced your filmmaking, making the film, excuse me, because uh, the two different families we meet, one is Jewish and the other is, is African-American, and, and it's so accurate and I, I mean, it was it was it was lovely to sort of encounter that, you know. Oh well, thank you. Um, the family, Nia's family, is Caribbean, and right. Nia is also Caribbean in life. Um, she's Bayesian from Barbados, and um, and my family's from Panama, and uh, but obviously, like our faces are black, so like we're from some African part of the world. Um, and, uh, and my parents kind of like speak like a patois. And so I really, one of the things I wanted was that like, you know, I've lived in America now for 22 years and I've had this own kind of like complication with the identity of, you know, now I just, when people, if people ask if I'm African American, I'll just say that I am because it's like so many words to explain that I'm not like to be like, no, but I, and then I just like confusing and it's like why don't you want to be and it's like it's not I just am not but like whatever and so I kind of wanted to put a family on screen that felt like my family which we, I mean, you know their faces are black but they speak English a little bit differently and and you know they have barbecues but the food's a little bit different and it's yeah. very tropical and fruity and um and the music is also different and that and that Nia could actually like in the live this in this where she's perceived actually as being african-american and then you go to her family and i isaac says it i didn't know there would be accents here and that's his way of saying like i thought you were normal black like what kind of black is this <laughs> you know it's like almost that's what he's saying he's yeah, like aren't yeah. you like normal black this is a different black you know like he acknowledges that it's a different black but like can't figure it out right. um and uh so so yes and then i think for us uh it was kind of nice to, um, I forget who it was, but a friend a friend said it recently, and I forget whose actual quote it is. I think it's Truffaut. He said that a movie is ultimately just boiled down to 15 minutes, and a friend of ours who's seen the film at BAM said for him, if the movie was only 15 minutes, it would just be, it would be the Seder and the barbecue like, right. next to each other. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, yeah, that's for me too. I think the film is very much those two moments. Um, huh. and you know, it's about race, it's about family, it's about dynamics, it's about people who are there for you and don't listen, <laughs> like all the things that are, uh, are in the movie and are just in my life as well, or in both our lives. And I think that, um, those two pieces are very much telling of who we are outside of the film. The palette of my family is a little more saturated and yellow and cozy. And Brett's world is a little bit beige and desaturated and a little more sour on paper. Yeah, and I think that there is an element to the reason why the two characters connect in the movie is that is that, is that uh, element of, uh, of them both feeling like outsiders um, and, uh, and maybe subconsciously picking up on that in each other. But sure, also, sure. Also, I think that, also some, there's got to be some explanation. Where, where, <laughs> yeah, also I think there's a degree here where they're both new to each other. Yes. And, Ready to meet, and in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, she's a way more exciting, new, objectively, <laughs> than he is. Because uh, she's gorgeous, but I think she's probably used to dating a very different type of man. She fathered her child with a different type of man than Isaac. Mm-hmm. So, and and she is lonely and she is vulnerable and and then also a very warm maternal type of person willing to give this uh, this broken bird a bit of a chance. I, I see it. Yeah. Well, there's a, of course, the most maybe controversial moment, which I think is going to. Uh probably get people the most reactive is i don't know how you're going to handle it really at q and a's or whatever but of course is a million matzo balls uh but a million matzo balls 
I, I, yeah, that's very controversial. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I po- you see, we're not on Skype. If we had been on Skype, and I think I have an internet connection issue is what the root of it is. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could read my face a little bit more but or at all. But, yeah, I mean, I, it's like one of those moments where I was in heaven you know, it's just, you know, I don't, I don't mean to re- be reductive about the film because it really does have a lot of levels to it. But there's just this, you know, song that the, the when uh, Isaac goes home for the Jewish holidays, which was just so familiar, a, a scene, the whole family getting together and the, the uh, dynamics. And then they break into the, you know, the, the musical portion of the evening and they sing the song and it was just unbelievable. It was so entertaining. I don't know. I just... Oh, thank you so much. We're... Yeah, I think that's the moment in the movie uh, where the audience gets a break. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, whole, the whole second act of the film is sort of a dedication to... Um, when I, I directed theater, I directed... My, my work was like physical theater. is very experimental, very choreographed. And I remember being asked by the filmmaker um, some years back, like, but do you know how to direct normal stuff? And I remember being really offended by that um, <laughs> because it was as if, like, well, first of all, there was this ranking of, like, what was superior, which was really upsetting to me, but there was also that um, the, the thing that I was inclined to make or the way that I was inclined to make was really, like, my choice or, like, where my spirit was driven and that somehow it had been out of my control, the ability to direct in what was like a straight way. Mm -hmm. But the second act of the film for me feels very much like a dedication to what I think is like pretty straight directing, you know, like straight storytelling for the most part, you know, Um, it it feels a little more adult, a little more restrained, a little less experimental, whereas the first and the third act are very much more experimental, you know, in presentation and in performance. I guess so. You're giving the audience the candy that they want rather than giving them their vegetables, which we do throughout most of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you're talking about the scenes where you actually kind of, in a way, poke fun at at experimental theater or theater in general, right? The scenes where... Yes, there's definitely some um, some jabs at that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially acting classes. Yeah, no, right, of course, and how serious um, some theater actors, perhaps, or theater acting teachers take themselves. But, yeah, the scenes with Michael Cera. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, they're the, some of the most emotionally irresponsible behavior I have seen in acting classes. Sure. From the teachers. Right. On the tip of my tongue is a film I remember seeing where the you know where they kind of explore that where you know they're the film they're, they're going to really psychologically dangerous areas, you know, with no thought about the re, the repercussions of that, you know, and that you're kind of satirizing that a little bit there, a little bit. Was Michael Sarah was he channeling Gene Wilder? Is that what I picked um, up there? Yes, his hair. His hair was. Yeah. His hair was <laughs> right. homage to. Uh... Gene Wilder's hair and Young Frankenstein. Oh, okay. I thought so. It was lovely. Very. I, it was a great choice. Thank you. Whatever it takes. Sometimes it just takes a little thing like that. Hey, whatever. Order. Just hey, you got to homage some hair sometimes. Homage the hair. Yeah. Yeah. He showed up with it. He showed Janik the. He was like, "What do you think of this?" And she was like, "I love it. Let's First part of all, it." Though. He did not show up. He called me right before we started shooting. Oh, I don't know. And the story. said. Um, he he knows that I really respond to large hair. So he called me before, like a month before, and he was like, I could cut my hair or I could make it grow longer. I've been growing it. And I was like, please, please leave it long. And um, and I asked him to send me a picture, and I then, like, made, you know, a little folder of, like, I was like, oh, my God, that's the hair from the homage because he's just got this, like, thick, juicy hair, and I wanted to be the first person to give him that hair. Mm-hmm. You got it. And so I was, yeah. And it makes him even more who I want to be because I have the opposite of that thick, juicy hair. <laughs> yeah, you don't know that. Well, you could buy buy something to compensate for that, but I, I think you were perfect the way you looked. And just getting back, your, <laughs> your, your part, uh, Isaac's participation in the matzo ball song, the million matzo ball songs, which also, by the way, is a great scene with David Pamer, the great David Pamer, the great Fred Malamud, the great Rhea Perlman. It was just, and who plays the sister? What's her, the actress's name? Carrie Appleby. Well, Carrie Appleby. Yeah, she's just a, a perfection. 
these scenes in the just on the phone. I, I, now I'm just like like just giving a list of scenes I like. But <laughs> this is my favorite question you've asked of all the questions. I'm sure like, it's just a, yeah. when you just do lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, can't help it. No, no, I love it. It's uh, so nice. Yeah. Well, I rewatched. You know, I saw it. Like I say, I saw it at Maryland, and then I watched it again the other day. So it's fresh in my mind. Fresh in my um, mind. Awesome. Now. As we wind down, I want to respect everybody's time here, but there's a particular person who's been on this podcast, uh, which we're doing, by the way, uh, twice, actually. Christine Vachon has been on this show twice. Oh, we love Christine so much. Yeah, we're very lucky to know her. I agree with you. Uh, now, a lot of people, actually, filmmakers actually listen to the show. I don't know, I don't know why, but it's true. And <laughs> just tell me about like how that came about, because that is uh, wonderfully... Um, I guess a very fortunate relationship to have fostered and very serendipitous. So how did that, how did that come about? Um, we, Killer films. I forget exactly how, I think how it happened was I directed the short film a few years ago called Gregory Bill Boom. Mm-hmm. And, oh, right. um, and it played, it, it was Google, Google financed it and it, um, was part of this like YouTube channel that they're doing that's called Jash. That yes, I know. It was curated by mm-hmm. yeah Michael Ferris, there are Silverman, and Eric, and Reggie Watts, and mm-hmm. um, so that piece came out online, and then um, it played at Sundance the top of the next year, and I won an award there. And I I don't know it, it, I someone must have sent it to her because I didn't know her and I did not get it to her, but I did it. It was you. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Um, and. So but don't tell anybody. That. Do not tell anybody okay, I because I, I really thank you because I don't I don't like attention. Yeah. I love you're so elegant. I appreciate I appreciate That's, your. Elegance. You have no idea how everybody how, listening to this. Don't keep your keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, it was. I don't know. It was like some months later. I think I got an email from David Hinojosa don't at Killer. Okay. Um, you know, just like asking what I was working on, saying that they liked the short and that they wanted to read Lemon. Um, and I sent them Lemon and like two or three days later, they were like, we love this. And uh, we were like, what's happening? And uh, and then I met with them in New York and then Brett met with them in New York some months later. I mean, I had like a 15 minute meeting with them. Like it was very short. They're working on something and I don't, I think Brett's meeting was a little longer than mine. Um, and we were sort of like just in bed with them and, uh, and they were the, the sole sort of fancy name on this project aside from the two of us and Michael for the last three years until we got it made. Well, as I said, it's a great, great bit. I mean, they're, they're wonderful. You know, they just have such a great history. Christine is, uh, you know, she's a pioneer and right. So it's great. Yeah, I, we've really learned a lot from working with her. I mean, she was an incredible guide and also is, you know, is invalu- an invaluable person to have in your corner. Um, sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. She lives up to the legend. Lemon, and this movie, by the way, yeah. is, there's no lemon. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> there you go. Boom! There's the quote. Thank you. Lemon is directed by Janixa. Did I get that right? Janixa? Janixa? Yes, that's correct. Okay, Bra- Janixa Bravo, and which stars Brett Gelman as well as many others. And I didn't include Judy Greer. I should mention her too. She's in the film. It opens in LA theatrically on the 18th of August, as well as uh, on uh, iTunes and Amazon Video, and and then a week later it's coming to New York City here in New York uh, on the 25th. So look out for that. That's all I can say. I, I was also at our, you know, BAM Cinema Fest recently. That, did you guys get to that? I'm sure you did. Yeah, we did. It was so fantastic to yeah. get to play in New York. I mean, it's a great. You know, series. we both met in New York, and uh, yeah. And while the film is very much shot in LA, I, there is a piece of it that feels very much like our life there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure they ate it right up. So we'll look forward to your coming back to New York for. You're going to do some uh, opening night Q and As and all that. Yeah, we okay. will. We'll be there in the next couple of weeks, actually. Cool. Yeah, the weekend of the 25th of right. August. Uh, okay, great. So maybe I'll try to get out to that. It well, would be lovely to see you. Again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, I hope this was not too unpleasant. And um, 
thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Oh, sure. My, it was a pleasure. I'm so glad it all worked out. Guys, uh, I'll let you go. Enjoy it. Enjoy well, thank it. you so much. Thanks Bye. So much. Have a great day. You too.